Okay, in this video I'm going over um, the difference between these four industry types, monopoly, oligopoly, monopolistic competition, and perfect competition. And um, we're going to think about what are the differences and how we model them and how um, we use game theory, so strategic behavior against your competitors. What are the differences in the elasticity of demand and what are the profit differences? So, monopoly, when we're talking about strategic behavior against competitors, of course monopolists have no competitors, so that's not applicable. Um, for oligopolies, when they're competing, the one thing they compete against their competitors for is price. Another thing they compete against their competitors for is, um, is investment in new technology. And of course, oligopolists can compete along other dimensions, advertising, um, almost any decision they make, the firm makes. They can do that strategically if they believe it's going to um, allow them to interact in the market with their competitors in a way that has an advantage. But the most classic um, things that an oligopolist will decide are what are the price against their competitor and how much are they going to invest in innovation. Now, monopolistic competition, um, in this situation, one thing they're going to, um, one thing that's strategic against their competitors is the location. And location um, means sort of where do you place yourself in the type of products where people might have a spectrum of preferences. Of course, the classic example is restaurants. Some people prefer restaurants with spicier food, other people prefer restaurants with sweeter food, and you might imagine a spectrum along which people locate their optimal food preference. It might look something like this. Okay, so this might be a histogram of people's optimal preferences. Some people really like spicy food, some people really like sweet food, some people like food in the middle that's not really either of those things. Um, and a firm can locate itself, so firm A might locate itself there, firm B might locate itself there, and firm C might locate itself here. And wherever your optimal preference is, and of course this could be your optimal preference on a given day, so maybe 40% um, of days you're sort of in the spicy realm, 30% uh, of days you're sort of in here, and 20% of days you're um, in here, and 10% of days you're way over here. Something like that, of course those need to add up to 100. But you go to the restaurant that's closest to your optimal preference during that time. And this, the um, sort of the wave thing up here represents a histogram of people's average preferences, like if you took a snapshot of the population on any given day, what percentage of them would be in the mood for spicy versus sweet versus in the middle. And you go to the restaurant that's closest to your preference for the day. So by locating themselves strategically, um, monopolistic competition firms can um, gain g gain more profits than they would if they just randomly place themselves or if they place themselves according to the chef's preferences rather than the population uh, average preferences like this. So location is one way of differenti differentiating your product. So um, product differentiation is really one key part here and we, we think of that as location because location makes a nice way of modeling this. So I'll, I'll go ahead and finish this. This is about product differentiation. All right, and perfect competition also has no strategy against competitors because the perfectly competitive firm is not really going to influence their competitors. So when you're talking about strategy um, between firms, you're probably talking about oligopoly or monopolistic competition, and those are two really um, important, prominent player, uh, types of markets that we see. Now, when we think about elasticity of demand, um, this is pretty straightforward. Um, monopoly is going to have the most inelastic demand or the lowest elasticity of demand. Perfect competition is going to have a perfectly elastic demand, and these two groups are going to be in between. So let's just write that out. Okay, so monopolists have a very inelastic demand, oligopolists have a pretty inelastic demand, so the elasticity of demand is lowish. 
For monopolistic competition, you actually have a pretty elastic demand because there's lots of substitutes since firms can enter and exit. So you do have a high-ish elasticity of demand, but it's not perfectly elastic. With perfect competition, the elasticity of demand is perfectly elastic, meaning it's a flat demand curve. All right, so how do we model these? Well, the monopoly model is our golden standard, so that's actually going to show up in three of these. Let's look at this. All right, so we have the classic monopoly model, models the monopoly. Um, sometimes we'll use the monopoly model for oligopolies as well, particularly if the oligopolies are colluding and forming a cartel. A cartel is basically where the leaders of all of the oligopoly firms get together behind closed doors and they say, let's just maximize total profit in the industry and then divide it up among us if they're colluding. So you can use the monopoly model for oligopoly, but a more classic way of modeling oligopoly is by using game theory. Um, monopolistic competition, that also uses the monopoly model. We just have a more elastic demand because because there's more substitutes with monopolistic competition. And we also have this dynamic entry and exit thing where um, if the firms are making a loss, some of them exit, that um, changes the elasticity of demand to make it more, more, ela more inelastic than it was, and profits go up then so that now they're equal to zero, etc., etc. Um, and then perfect competition, this is classic supply and demand curves, firm cost curves, and there's entry and exit with perfect competition as well. So in the long run, monopolies and oligopolies have positive profits, positive economic profits. With monopolistic competition and perfect competition, firms enter and exit until profits are equal to zero. And of course, that doesn't mean that the investors of the firm make nothing. They make exactly how much they need to make to stay in the industry. So whatever their opportunity cost of investing in that firm is, um, whatever amount of money they could get elsewhere, you need to pay them at least that amount of money or the firm's going to go out of business. So... Um, Profits go to zero in the long run for these two firms. And that's, that's just an overview of the difference between these four types of firms, or four types of industries.